I'm a prosthodontist. So uh, I work in PMS Dental College, Trivandrum. Uh, so today uh, we have been from GMI implants to educate you on basis of solutions of implant. See, no patients are coming to you to place implant. They are coming for teeth replacement, right? So implants are, is an aid to replace the missing teeth. So first of all, we have to know the components of implant. That's the first basic thing what you have to learn. Components, knowing components is a must. This is a famous quote by Abraham Lincoln. If you have eight hours to chop down a tree, you use six hours to sharpen the knife. So in the rest of the two hours, you can cut off the tree. That's the right quote, right? So this means a lot for us in implantology also. You have to know what are the major components to be used right from the beginning. When, once you buy a kit of implant, you have to know what is the ratchet, what is the uh, ball apartment driver, what will be the hexagon drench. These are the components. You can see there are a lot of other components, but the basic components you have to know. The basic components you have to know is a screwdriver to drive the prosthetic screw and a screwdriver to drive the implant. So these companies who manufacture the implants have different shapes of drivers. Some companies come with hexagon shape, some companies come with trigon shape. So there is lots of company, more than 300 implant companies are there around the globe. So uh, I don't tell that you learn all the systems, but the systems, what you use, you have to know what is there inside the kit. So that is the basic thing to be understand it. So you can see, this is the insertion wrench, the implant carrier, this is the regular uh, hand driver for uh, your cover screw, for your healing apartment, for your prosthetic driver, anything you can call it that, that component. So this is a manual wrencher, this is a manual wrench driver. So these are the basic components that every catalog has this. No need to take photographs, no need to uh, keep it memorized. So you can just get a catalog of any company and they will provide you all these things. How many of you know this tool? What is this tool? Can anyone? We are doing over dangers, right? We are doing over dangers. This is a sleeve insertion and a removal tool. This is also there in implantology. So most of us don't know these kind of tools. Even when I don't get this tool, I use a periosteal elevator. When I, use, when I use a periosteal elevator, the housing of the screws, sorry, the housing of the uh, attachment sleeve will get damaged. So usage of right proper of tool is very important. So uh, this is uh, expanders, broken screw extractors, all these things are there in the catalog. I don't want to explain that more on you can go, the go through the specifications of these catalogs. You don't need to buy, you can go through online and you can download as PDFs. So uh, here we are talking about the uh, GMI implants. So morning sections, you have been heard about the surgical protocols. Then afternoon, uh, you have been heard about Dr. Srikanth, have told you about the impression techniques. Now I am to connect these things with the laboratory. So uh, 
why does this all start? It starts all from the, basically from the dentist office. So it has to be very clear that your impressions have to be very clear, your implant placement have to be very clear, okay. If you are angulating an implant, you have to choose the right component. Don't think that your custom apartment is the only solution for your implant prosthesis. It is only an option. You have lot of other apartments also. For example, you are angulating 30 degree, you have multi-unit apartments. If you are angulating 17 degree, again there is multi-unit apartments. If you are not enough, if you, if you don't have the access to a multi-unit apartments, you can have a non-engaging castable apartment where labs nowadays do that. So these are all the surgical protocols. I don't want to go through these parts. This is impression coping techniques. Just now, Dr. Srikanth has uh, covered all these things, open tray, closed tray impressions, and uh, this is the splinting techniques and all these things, copings. This is uh, multiple unit over danger cases, transfers. This is uh, how they fabricate a cement retained prosthesis. After making impression, it will be sent to the laboratory. The, the, uh, the apartments will be milled. And uh, after that, they will customize and uh, they will go for a prosthesis. In clinical situation, uh, in this peak, uh, temporary cylinders can be used and uh, you can make a temporary crowns for this. Immediately after placement of the impression, I'm talking about immediate loading, not delayed loading. If it is a delayed loading, as you know, they will go for a cover screw, then they will uh, transfer it to a healing cap. After transfer of the healing cap, they will go for impressions and uh, the prosthesis will be done. This is the splinting procedures in a cement retained prosthesis. And you can see this is the laboratory phase. I can explain you in from here. You can see this is the castable apartment. For every implant, castable apartment, an engaging castable apartment, we can't use it. If it is a multiple unit case, for example, you are placing a full mouth case of implant, six or nine units, 10 units, then you can't go for a non-rotational castable apartment. It has to be a rotational castable apartment. Then after, you will get a passive fit. Otherwise, you don't get a passive fit in your danger, in your uh, hybrid prosthesis. So again, these are all the tools and the torque protocols of implants. This is the torque protocol for your uh, transfer analog. This is a torque protocol for your multi-unit. This is a torque protocol for your healing cap and your uh, cover screw. And this will be the torque protocol for your peak temporary cylinders, multi-unit transfers, and your prosthetic screw. When it comes to prosthetic screw, it can go up to 25 to 30 newtons of torque. This is ball attachments. These are all the torque values of the components which is provided by GMI. So uh, today, the digital impression, digital dentistry have gone through implantology also, from right from designing, for, for, for sorry, right from planning, you can make a guided stance, you can uh, design the prosthesis, you can mill it, you can deliver the processes in an excellent fashion. This component, how many of you know this? This is a scan body, right sir? This is a scan body, this is the fixture for the scan body. This is a fixture for the scan body. You can't directly put this scan body on the implant. You need a fixture. So this will be acting as a fixture. And above that, you can place this scan body. 
What is the use of this scan body? Come on, let's make this interesting, no? It's afternoon time, hot meals. I, th I hope that everyone is sleeping. Yes, good sir, it's, it's for scanning. Okay, you have two type of scanning techniques. One is intraoral scanning and then laboratory scanning. So, uh, what is the use of this kind of material in that? Because all these scan bodies are designed in a fashion by the company. They have given a library to the software that is the designing CATS, CAT, CAT CAM softwares. So inside that CAT CAM software, they have a library. So when you scan the scan body, the 3D images will be recorded in the softwares. So you can directly, for example, this is GMI scan body. You just, we can just take the library from the CAT software, for example, ExoCAT software, and you can just place it on the side aspects of this scan body. It will automatically detect. I'll show you that in a video. So uh, you can see this. How many of you know this component? If you are going for digital, definitely you have to know this. Have anyone come, come across this component? Anyone? This component? I think uh, more than 300 people are here. Everyone is keeping mum. Afternoon, tie base, good sir. Excellent. This is a tie base. Okay, this tie base, you can, when you do a scanning, when you design a prosthesis digitally, this is the, this is, is, this is the apartment which, we, which is going to go inside the patient's mouth. Without this component, you can't design, you can't make uh, a 3D designing on a CAD software. Because the company have given two types of tie base. One is regular platform tie base and a wide body, wide platform tie base. As you know, a wide platform will go from 4.75 to um, almost uh, uh, 5.10, I think so, in GMI implant. In other criterias, that is regular platform implants, it will go up to 4.25 from the base level, that is 3.30 implant. So these two tie bases have different libraries inside the software. So when you take the scan body and put it inside, when you get an end product, this is going to help you to insert inside the patient's mouth. So without this, you can't go for a uh, designing aspect. So now you will understand what is this regular platform, white platform, why this scan body. Every company has a scan body which is designed inside the library to make things understand. So here we are uh, designing an, uh, um, an uh, implant prosthesis. It's a single unit crown. I'll show you the videos so you can get clear about the designing aspects. But before designing aspects, you have to see the laboratory process also. This is the STL file. You can see that the scan body is scanned. You can see this, these parts. These parts will be the reference for our implant placements. So once you refer, the computer will automatically, the software will automatically detect the scan body. So uh, you can see this. The exact placement of the implant is selected. The exact placement of the implant is selected. This is the tie, tie base. So in above this tie base, we are going to fabricate the prosthesis. You can see that the screw will be screwed. You can make a screw retained or a cement pr retained prosthesis according to your wish. Not wish, according to the patient conditions, sorry. So this will be the designing part and you can see the custom apartment inside. So that will be going on the tie base. This is the custom apartment. So. Uh, you can finish the prosthesis either a cement retained or a screw retained prosthesis. This is a full mouth case. You can see only six implants are there. Is this good or not? This condition. This, this patient was done at uh, 
2017 or 18, I think so. How many of you tell that this condition is good? No, there is no teeth, there is no implant. Distal cantilever, highly contraindicate area, this patient failed. Not the implant, the prosthetics failed. No, a lot of conditions are there. When you go beyond the limit in this cantilever condition, it will fail. If there is no support, make sure that make an implant on the posterior region or do some limitations with the cantilever. There is proportions for the cantilever. That's a big subject. I don't want to explain that on uh, these aspects. I just generally want to tell you, don't go with cantilevers. So you can see here, this is a bar retained prosthesis. Okay. So uh, this will be an, um, this will be a prosthesis uh, which is hybrid. How many types of hybrids are there? Cement retained hybrids, screw retained hybrids, over dangers, that's also a type of hybrid. Okay, flangeless things, okay, because patient don't need flange. If the flange is there, there will be a lot of foot impactions, the patient is getting irritated, okay, this is a supporting aid, but still, if the patient is going for more than four implants, definitely the patient will demand you to go for, to have a fixed prosthesis. Is it right? Is it right? Nal implant it too. Patient demand it to you. Third chair and demand him. Fixed diet to love on the Palio Chitarana. In the demand it to you. Alle. Third chair. Abo, either one of the number of code solution. We have to make sure that the solutions has to be in a uh, good manner. Okay. Uh, if I go for this, this, this case is a case of. We have made a bar screwed inside that implant and a hybrid above that because this is a cantilever condition that any conditions can fail. You can see this. This will be the exact outcome when it is designed outside. When the, after the bar is designed, we can make a prosthesis. In this situation, you know the vertical dimension of the patient, you know the bar height, you know the exact occlusal point contacts. Okay, you can see a canine guidance also in this region. You can see the uh, functional parts and non-functional things. So uh, right from the beginning, you when you were uh, when the, when the patients come in, you see the condition, you diagnose the condition, you make implants, you splint it, you transfer it with scan body, you design it, and finally you will get a beautiful prosthesis. So that will be the happiest part of the patient when you give a good prosthesis. These are uh, basal implant prosthesis. This is not single piece implants. Okay, don't think that we can't make emergence profile or uh, a good prosthesis in such situation. Definitely we can make a good prosthesis out of these conditions also. So uh, I have been briefing all around the bush. So uh, nowadays, everyone knows that artificial intelligence is uh, ruling our world, right? So uh, if you browse three or four times about uh, uh, Namita, then it will come Namita. Okay, it will keep on coming on your mobile as Namita or Sharukan. Okay, so uh, artificial, artificial intelligence is moving very faster. So uh, in near future, uh, we, you can see the advantages of that in the clinical sessions also. Hope I am boring you, but still. So I don't need a video for this. Okay, here I have uh, done a video demonstration of uh, and this is the surgical protocols. This GM I have given us uh, the implant placement. Uh, you can see the countersinks and all these things. I, I hope these things are not needed for us because from morning sessions you are all hearing this. So this is the uh, transfer analog. This is a closed transfer impression analog where you can see this. 
you can see this is a lab analog fixing. We are fixing the lab analog and we are just placing onto the impression. Make sure that the fit of this uh, component is excellent. Then uh, you use gingy fast for gingival forming so that uh, the gingiva is formed. We apply, uh, see, the gingiva and uh, the silicons are more polyvinyl siloxane, so it might stick. So an application, or sorry, oil or uh, dye lube, some sort of separating medium is used to uh, separate both the things. So uh, after that, you can inject the gingival former. What is the use of gingival former? What is the use of a gingival former? Yes, excellent, sir. To replicate the soft tissue, because when it comes to the laboratory, we need what the patient have, because we are going inside the tissue. For example, it's not like that. We are traveling through the platform area of the implant. Okay, so we need the gingiva exactly here in the laboratory also to replicate things. So we uh, we re we will. Uh, we replicate that. After that, we just remove that gingival former and put it back on the cast. As Dr. Srinath told, when you make an impression, see here the implant, the implant transfers have a thread, a hexagon shape. That has to be clearly recorded. If it is more depth, more height, it is angulated, tilted, rotated, any format is not accepted in the laboratory because if any of these things are going wrong, the complete procedure will go wrong and the prosthesis doesn't fit on the patient's mouth. So in this condition, you can see that the exact gingiva is on the place, the transverse is there. So this model is highly reliable and we can start working. Before start working, we remove all the nodules from the teeth and also the opposing teeth also. Because occlusion is also an impact, very, very important factor in our prosthetis, prosthetics. So now you can see that we are attaching the scan body apartment the scan body apartment is attached. Now we will put the scan body above this attachment. Now you can see in this model, everything is ready for scan. The lower model, the upper model and the bite. From there, we are st uh, starting the scan process. These are calibration of these things. So uh, we are selecting the library. We will uh, make it as a screw retained prosthesis. We selected the teeth. So we started the scan process. This is the scanning procedures. We use uh, sprays for scanning because metal parts is not that easy to scan. Sometimes it might miss some parts, so that after you can see this areas where the scanning is done. So uh, this is how a 3D model is generated. Now you can see the upper model, the lower model, and the scan body in position. You can see the scan body here. So uh, all these procedures is done. After the procedures is done, we will go to the designing software and uh, start designing this same case. So here, uh, I, I told you before that 
the 3D model is generated, and you can see the scan body here, which uh, we have selected the library from the, um, from the software. So uh, after selecting the library from the software, we have uh, generated uh, this, the TA base is there in place. So uh, it has to be individually scanned, the gingiva, the model, the scan body, everything is individually scanned and merged. Here you can see the design, you can see the high points there. It's virtually designed and reduced. And you can see the buckle corridor space and all these things, corrections, prosthetically, what can be best done will be done with a minimal contact. The blue shows the minimal contact on the software. And uh, now you can see the almost the crown is good enough and make sure that our point contacts, that means our occlusal contacts, as you all know, uh, the functional cusp of the maxillary is always the lingual cusp. So we have given point contacts over the lingual aspects. Okay, we have to check with the prosthesis for the long axis. You have to check with the um, force of directions. We have uh, designed all these aspects and uh, finally the prosthesis is ready for uh, printing or milling. Here I have shown some simple printing process. We bring to the printing software, supports are generated. So after the supports are generated, the prosthesis is done. So uh, this is the major aspects uh, of what we do in laboratory. So uh, I hope that little bit of things you might understand because uh, in day-to-day -day life, uh, sorry, In our day-to-day -day life, uh, when we do implant practicing, uh, it is always mandate to know the sequence of the work, right from placement of implant, transfer of impressions, and uh, what type of solution what you are going to give to your patient. That is very important. And uh, how is the outcome? Uh, hope everyone was sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for listening um, and uh, thank you all for uh, your kind coordination and uh, the organizing partners who uh, invited us for uh, giving an opportunity to uh, meet with you and speak with you. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll hope Dr. Bindraj.